Hi everyone, so in this question we're going to look at um, Lewis structures to identify the following. The hybridization of all unique atoms and um, do not consider residents. So basically it's just for practice and we'll see that as it goes. Um, and we can also say that H doesn't hybridize because it only has an S orbital. And then we're going to find the total number of sigma and pi bonds. So these are going to be familiar because these are the ones we drew the Lewis structures of in the last chapter. However, if you're not sure how to draw the Lewis structure of this, um, like on a test, you're going to have to first draw the Lewis structure and then do these things. So as to not be repetitive, I'm not going to go over how to draw the Lewis structure. That said, if you need to review how to draw the Lewis structure, please go back to the Chapter 7 homework um, to look at how we draw the Lewis structures of each of these things. All right, so we need to find the hybridization of all unique atoms, and then we need to find the total number of sigma and pi bonds. So before we do that, first one, let's review what those things are, okay? So the hybridization is like kind of the combination of orbitals, um, and it does a good job of explaining the shapes of different things. But what you need to know to find the hybridization is to count domains. And remember that domains are lone pairs and atoms. So you're counting those domains just like you would count for um, finding the molecular and electron geometry, which is what we did in the previous chapter. So but when you count domains, you're then going to hybridize orbitals. So atoms or sigma bonds and lone pairs are in hybrid orbitals. What are your possible orbitals? Well, your possible orbitals are an S, three Ps, and we won't get there but 5Ds, because there's one S orbital, 3P orbitals, and 5D orbitals. So if you had three domains, for example, this would be three hybrid orbitals, S, P, P, which would be S, P, 2. If you had four orbitals, it'd be S, P, 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 or four domains, it'd be S, P, 3, S, P, 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 S, P, 3. If you had five, S, P, 3, D. If you had six, S, P, 3, D, Two, which is the um, highest you'll see in this class. So that's basically um, how this works. Note that when you get to a course like organic chemistry, they'll say the reaction occurs at the sp2 carbon. Okay, so knowing how to do this is really important and becoming familiar with it is really important. Sigma and pi bonds. So the sigma bond is the bond that occurs between the two atoms. So between a carbon and hydrogen, that's just a sigma bond. That's the electron density that exists between this carbon and this hydrogen. So a single bond is one sigma bond. All right, if you have a pi bond, a double bond, okay, so a double bond has one sigma and one pi, the pi is going to occur above like for example above and below the plane now carbon and hydrogen don't have a double bond but you could have an unhybridized p orbital sharing electron density above and below the plane all right if you have a triple bond it's going to be one sigma and two pi so um in this case the triple bond would be um one sigma and two pi so you could have for example one above and below the plane and then one inside and outside of the paper if you will okay so that's how you could have that um the two pi bonds which again are in unhybridized orbitals so this is uh basically what we're going to look at here note that all bonds are either a sigma or a pi so i strongly recommend you count the total number of bonds for this one it's pretty straightforward but for one that has multiple double bonds count all the double all the bonds all right and then um basically decide if they're sigma or pi. Now, for all of these cases, we're not going to really consider um, hybridization as we go. We're just going to count it for what we see. So we're going to pretend that hybridization doesn't exist. Um, and the reason we're doing that is this is practice. All right, so let's take a look. So after all that long rambling, now we can actually do one. So we have methane here, CH4. First thing I want to do is I want to count domains with respect to carbon. Note that I do not need to find the hybridization of hydrogen because it only has an S orbital. So if I look at carbon, it has one, two, three, do four domains. One, two, three, four domains, which means we need four hybrid orbitals. One, two, three, four orbitals. So we start counting here and we work our way in this direction. So we're not going to call that SPPP. We're going to call that SP3. All right. Now for the um, CH4, we're going to do sigma and pi bonds. Well, in this case, we have one, two, three, four bonds, and they're all sigma bonds. So in this case, we have four sigma bonds. 
All right, so if you haven't already watched the explanation at the beginning of this, please start with that, where I go through the hybridization and the sigma and the pi bonds. Now we're just going to do examples. So here we have CS2. So in the case of CS2, we have hybrids for both atoms because they're, neither of them are hydrogen. So let's look at carbon. We want to count domains. Carbon has one, two domains. If it's got two domains, it needs two hybrid orbitals. Again, start counting right here over here on the left and count over one, two orbitals. So one, two is an sp hybridization. All right, let's look at sulfur. Sulfur has one, two, three domains. The sulfur is the same, so we only need to do it once. So since it only has, since it has three domains, we need three hybrid orbitals. One, two, three hybrid orbitals, s and two p's, which we abbreviate sp2. Sigma and pi bond. So first thing we want to do is we want to count the total number of bonds. There's one, two, three, four bonds. So when you have double bonds especially, it's a good idea to count them all. Reason being, they're all sigma or pi. So there must be a total of four identified as sigma or pi. So if we look here, we have four total bonds. They're both double bonds. Each double bond is one sigma and one pi. So one of these two bonds is a sigma, and one of these two bonds is a sigma for a total of two sigma. One of these is a pi, and one of these is a pi for a total of two pi. So we have two sigma and two pi, which totals up our four bonds. So now we have XeF2. And again, neither of these are hydrogen. So we have Xe and F that we're going to find the hybridization of. Notice that both Fs are the same, a single bond and three lone pairs, so you don't need to write it twice. So let's take a look at this. Let's look, do xenon first because I wrote it first. How many domains does xenon have? It has one, two, three, four, five. Remember, atoms and lone pairs are in domains. So one, two, three, four, four, five. Five domains. What's the hybridization? Well, we need five hybrid orbitals. One, two, three, four, five. Sigma bonds and lone pairs are in hybrid orbitals, so domains and hybrid orbitals go together. So one, two, three, four, five. We abbreviate that as SP3D. Okay, and we don't write it as SPPPT. Fluorine. How many, um, how many uh, domains does it have? One, two, three lone pairs, and xenon, four. So it's one, two, three, four, or sp3. Again, we don't write it as sppp, we write it as sp3. Sigma and pi bonds. In this case, there's only two bonds. All right, we could write it down like we did for that one, but there's only two bonds. Neither of them are a double bond, so both of these are sigma bonds. So a, sigma, a single bond is just a sigma, and there's one, two of them. Um, a double is a sigma and a pi, and a triple is a sigma and two pi each. All right, so we have um, sulfite here, SO3 2 minus. And in this case, we have two different types of oxygens. We have the single bonded oxygen and the double bonded oxygen. Note that we're not going to consider hybridization here. So we're, um, excuse me, we're not going to consider resonance here. So um, basically, we're just going to do it for the picture that we have. All right, so let's take a look here. So we have sulfur, we have oxygen A as written, and oxygen B as written. Okay, so just for practice. Let's look at sulfur here. How many domains does sulfur have? Well, it has the lone pair, one, two, three, four, the oxygens. So we have one, two, three, four hybrid orbitals. Sulfur has sp3 hybridization. Let's look at oxygen A, the double bonded oxygen. It has one, two, three domains. So it needs one, two, three orbitals, sp2. Note that because of resonance, this isn't truly a double and single bonds, so we're gonna we're just gonna write it um, this way for practice. Then this oxygen, how many domains does it have? One, two, three, four domains. So therefore, it needs four orbitals. One, two, three, four orbitals. We would call the single bonded oxygens sp3. Sigma and pi's. We have a total of one, two, three, four bonds. So again, since we have multiple bonds, I want to count them. And one, two, three of those are sigma. So the first bond of the double bond is a sigma. This is just a sigma, and this is just a sigma. So three of those four bonds are sigma. And that means the other one of those bonds, the second bond of the double bond, if you will, is a pi. So that's three plus one, which is four bonds. So counting the bonds can help you to just make sure you don't miss anything.
All right, so we have the last one, and again, we have some resonance going on here that we're going to ignore just for practice. So we again have oxygen A and oxygen B, and this time we have nitrogen. So I'm going to put nitrogen, then oxygen A and oxygen B, because they're different. All right, this is a double bond in two lone pairs, and this is a single bond in three lone pairs. So if we look here, oxygen, oh, excuse me, nitrogen has one, two, three domains. Three domains is one, two, three orbitals sp2. If we look at oxygen A, it has one lone pair, two lone pairs, and the nitrogen for three total domains, three orbitals, sp2. And oxygen B has one, two, three, four domains, which makes it sp3. You'll note that the oxygens are the exact same as up here when you have the double bond or the single bond or the number of lone pairs because it changes the number of domains. Let's look at the bond situation here. We again have one, two, three, four bonds. So this is very similar to the previous example. All right. And in those four bonds, we have one, two, three sigma. The first bond of the double bond, this is just a sigma, and this is just a sigma for a total of three sigma. And the second bond of the double bond, or the only other bond, is a pi. So we have one pi bond.